Another key thing that we have going on with our threats to our coastal zone is the introduction of non-native things. And typically here we're talking about um, biological introductions. It can be other things, it can be pollution, et cetera, but biological introductions, non-native species, a huge challenge. In this case, we're here in the neighborhood above campus. This is the Dos Vientos neighborhood. And where I'm standing right now is technically open space. So this area right here is designated um, by the development here as something that's deeded to permanent open space, permanent recreation, et cetera. Challenge is because we have fires, so, so we, because we have fires here, um, for example, the 2013 Springs fire, which started down at campus at CSUCI, uh, or, or near campus, at Camarillo Springs, went right through campus within a, an hour or two, went all the way to the coast, about seven or so miles to striking the coast, came up along PCH on the Malibu coast, and then when the, when the sun went down, the fire migrated back towards us here, uh, towards inland. And only because we started a backfire on the other side of this hill did that fire not get to these houses over here. So we have this area, which is, it's greater than, but it's at least 100 feet. In this case, it's more than that from the homes. There's, there's a private fence line here. And so this is all for wildfire management, right? We don't want these houses to burn down. We don't want people to be threatened, et cetera. So this sort of makes sense. But what the unintended consequence is, is disturbance. Oftentimes the key step for the introduction of non-native critters is disturbance, is fragmentation of landscape, is outright destruction of, of landscapes and seascapes, et cetera. And then when humans come in and, and introduce propagules, we can get those critters taken over. Now in this case right here, that we're recording this in August, so this is, uh, you know, um, midsummer time basically. What we're seeing here is th these are uh, uh, non-native grasses from the pampas area of southern uh, of South America. This is uh, a pampas grass. These are tall, non-native grasses that were originally introduced for ladies' hats and for plumes and for decorations. Santa Barbara, California is one of the epicenters where they originally planted. Um, uh, in any event, they've spread. So people have actively planted these and these are incredibly well dispersing grasses. So these grasses come in, as you see here, each of these tufts have been completely cut down by the grounds folks that have cleared out this area and, and, and gotten rid of all these non-native grasses and things, but they're still persisting. So here is one individual, there is one individual, there is one individual, etc. So now we've come in and it's the official policy of the state, of the county, enforced by the county fire department and the local ordinances to disturb the area around properties ostensibly to reduce fuel threats, to reduce the fuel for wildfires, but in effect that amounts to a constant disturbance and allows in these non-native plants. Um, and so you can see this here, we have this whole disturbance. Now, in addition to the, these conspicuous non-native plants that have really taken over the um, uh, large swaths of the Big Sur coastline, Northern California coastline, along the immediate littoral fringe, huge problems displacing native communities, etc. Um, in addition to that, all, most, almost everything you see in this band, in this swath here that's been cut, is non-native. There are a few oak trees, a few native oak trees, but pretty much all the other plants are um, things that the Native Americans that were here, let's say, 200 years ago, the Chumash, they would not have recognized. These were all introduced from Europe and Asia uh, with the uh, Europeanization, the colonization of California. And so if we keep, if we keep flying down this, you'll see this whole disturbance this whole disturbance, this whole area is completely disturbed. Um, and so as we fly on the right, you'll see the coastal sage scrub and the native intact vegetation. On the left, the highly urbanized developed areas. And in between is this disturbance zone. This disturbance zone is, a, is not only a, a, a place where plants can come in, but it's also a place where non-native animals can uh, more easily get around. Native animals too, but, but this notion of disturbance causing these constant pressures of introduction is an ongoing threat that we have to deal with in the coastal zone. We've seen that in places like harbors. We've seen that in places um, like this, uh, you know, terrestrial side. We see it pretty much everywhere. Ice plant, um, um, non-native dune grasses, etc. And it's, it's a significant challenge, but one that most people don't recognize as a major coastal zone uh, management uh, issue. Invasive species. Good times.